So number seven dealt with you're traveling at 64.9 kilometers per hour and your car breaks at negative 2.62 meters per second squared. A cat crosses the road in front of you. How far away must it be to avoid becoming a wet spot from the pavement? <coughs> so clearly we want to write down what we know. <coughs> and of course we know 64.9 kilometers per hour has to be our the I. And ideally we notice that it's in kilometers per hour. Yeah. And then we had negative 2.62 meters per second squared. You see the little square, didn't you think? A. A. And then you said, hey, if we're going to stop and not kill it, then the VF has to be zero. Zero, so that makes sense. And like I said, ideally, you notice that this was in kilometers per hour and this was in meters per second squared, and they don't quite go together too well. So we want to change this to meters per second so it goes together better. So we divided that by 3.6 and found that was 18.0 meters per second for our V initial. And then we had to say, okay, we need to find a formula that has VF and VI and A and D. And, and, and that's where you went, um, 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 um. How many people got to the um part? Good. If you got this far, you were doing well, and then you got to this part, and you were like, I, I can't find a formula that matches all that stuff. It's good. What you had to do in this one, and this was the first time that I made you do this, you had to plug it to two formulas. You had to say, I don't have any of that stuff. But... The stuff I do know, VI and VF and A, are in the equation we learned on Friday, and that had VI, VF, and A, and T in it. And so if I solved for that and found time from that, then, of course, you'd switch the A and the T up. Once I did that, I could plug into either one of the formulas that I gave you yesterday, and there was enough to do it into both equations, and you would have been in great shape in either one. Or, those of you who like to cheat could have taken yesterday's notes and turned them over and learned today's formula. Oh my god. <laughs> today's formula gets rid of time. <laughs> so, so, you want to take out yesterday's notes and flip those over. Yes. And yesterday's notes, when you flip it over, we're, we're, we're going to learn the new formula. I learned the formula from one of the past students. Yeah. Really? Out within the notes. And now that I see it there, I just. Yeah. <laughs> so I was hoping you wouldn't flip it over and cheat, that you were figuring out, hey, I could figure this out if I use two formulas. Now, that was different because we haven't done that yet. In a couple more units, we'll be doing stuff where you have to do like seven formulas in the one problem, and, and it won't be shared to you anymore because you're used to the process and you're learning how to think. But the first time I made you do that, it was like, no. So you get better at it. So today what we're, we're going to do is we're going to get rid of time. So the only formula we have left to discuss is one that has an acceleration in it, but it doesn't have time in it. Every other formula we've learned so far, the only thing that all four of them have is time. And a lot of times we just don't care how long it took for something to happen. We just care about the other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to algebra two formulas together and get rid of time. So we're going to take the first formula I learned you yesterday, and we're going to take the formula we learned on Friday, and we're going to get rid of team. So first we're going to take this one, and the T and the A are going to trade places, and it's going to look like that. And then when I'm going to take T out, I'm going to replace it with everything that this is. So if I do that, I end up with that. So notice how D is still D, and this whole mess is still this whole mess. And then this whole mess fills in for T right there. Yay. So then we're going to say, OK, I'm going to move this 2 and the A up next to the D. And it's going to look like that. And then you're going to look at this, and you're going to say, hey, this is like an algebra class where I had two binomials, and I had to foil them, right? So if you, what does FOIL stand for? First outer, first outer inner line. So first is going to be VIVF, and then outer is going to be VI, and negative VI is going to give me negative VI squared, and then inner is going to be VF times VF is VF squared, and then last is going to be negative VI times VF is negative VIVF. Then you say to yourself, hey, look, here's a positive VIVF, and here's a negative VIVF, and those are going to... 
cancel each other, and that's going to leave me that, and again, I don't like that negative thing, man, so instead of having a negative on this side, I'm going to pop it over to the other side and make it positive, and it's going to look like that. Isn't that pretty? Nice. Uh, it's magenta. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our last formula, and what is special about this last formula? Hey, yeah, there's no time involved here. So. If I knew this one, that would have been taking yesterday's number seven, and instead of making it a two-step problem, I could have made it a one-step problem, yay team. <clears throat> so let's go back and do that. Here's number seven again. And <clears throat> again, we converted kilometers per hour to meters per second, so we had this as our V initial, and we had our V final, and this was our ah. Uh. So if we algebra our new formula for D, it ends up looking like that. Those of you who are bad at algebra, you want to circle that or something so that you get to used to the way it looks. And of course, if we're looking for A, the A and the D would just trade places. So that would be easy to deal with. <clears throat> if we plug in the numbers, it's going to look like this. Now, if you are using fraction mode all the time in your calculators, then just plug it in exactly like it works. But if you're not using fraction mode on your calculator, then I want you to pay attention here. How many things are underneath the line? Two. Two. So you need to divide by and divide by. You don't divide by multiply. If you divide by multiply, you just took this one and brought it up to the top. So divide by, divide by, because there's two things there. So plug this into your calculator, see if you can get the right answer. That will go over that idea again. Again, some of you get so dependent on your calculator that you forget how to think, and so I, I, I try and train you. It's okay to just leave the calculators that exist. You don't have to turn them in. Very nice. Good night. Good night. Ideally, if you plug that in correctly, you should have gotten 61.8320610. If you were getting something radically different, again, you were probably plugging in to the thing wrong, which I'll, I'll show you what to do here. So, of course, we'd round that up to three zig figs based on the numbers we have, and that would work out like this. Now. I just want to show you so you mentally understand because some people, again, they get confused on this. If I have 12 divided by 3 times 4, what, what should the answer be? 1. The answer should be 1. But if I plug that into my calculator, 12 divided by 3 times 4, it's going to give me 16. Because what it's going to do is it's going to take 12 divided by 3, which is 4, and then you're going to say times 4 is going to be 16. But the answer should be 1. Now, if you stick in your calculator 12 divided by 3 divided by 4, you're going to get 1. And again, those of you who do fraction mode, then just la 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 and don't listen. Because it'll be fine if you're in fraction mode. But I, I would like you to understand that mathematically, the, the line means divide, and everything underneath is divide. And yes, these two, you could multiply these two first and then divide them, but you can also just divide by divide by because they're underneath the line. So I'd like you guys to mentally understand that everything under the line is being divided by. So I hit divided by, divided by. Okay. Moving on. So far, everything we have learned has been in the horizontal plane. We've been going forward, we've been going backwards, we've been shoving things around. But what happens if we start to go up and down? If we go up and down, we already know several things. First of all, what's pulling on us? Gravity. Yes, gravity is pulling on us, and gravity accelerates everything near the Earth's surface at negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Is that number important? Yes. Yes. Do you have to have that number memorized? Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, you will use that number so much that it will stick in your head fairly quickly, but that is a number you do have to memorize. And on your test on Thursday, if you don't have that number memorized, you're going to be very, very sad because you're going to do fine on the front page, but on the back page, you're going to start failing everywhere. So <laughs> make sure that you get this number stuck in your head. Why is this negative? Because what direction does gravity pull? Down. Down. Well, what if I'm going up? Gravity's still pulling me down. down. So if I take Bob and, and we toss Bob up in the air, so here's Bob and woo! -hoo. Now, all the way up, Bob was getting slower, and all the way down, Bob was getting faster. We know he got slower because he stopped, right? So on the way up, he was getting slower. On the way down, he was getting faster. Now, did gravity change? No, but half the time it was going against his motion, half the time it was going with his motion, but not because gravity changed, but because he changed direction, right? So gravity kept going this way the whole time, the whole time, the whole time. The second thing we know is how fast were we moving when we got to the highest point? Zero. Yeah, before Bob could stop going up and go down, he had to stop going up. So at the highest point, we have to go to zero. And we know this is true also because on the way up, what we're going to call is all numbers going upward, we are going to call positive. That's going to be the direction that we're going when we're going upward. Which means if I'm going down, I have to be negative. So all that's, that's why this is a negative 9.81 because it's going down. It's pulling me down. So. The up and down, we're going to call positive and negative. Just like when we're going forward, we call it a positive. When we go backwards, we call it negative when we're horizontal. But if we're going vertical, we're going to call positive upward and negative downward. Now, if my numbers are switching from a positive number to a negative number, because Bob went up and then he was here and then he went down, um, <coughs> if I change from a positive number to a negative number, I have to go through where? Zero. Now, does that mean Bob hung out there for 10 minutes? No, he was there for one brief instant. But for that one brief instant, at the top, he was at exactly zero. And that's a good thing to know. That helps us mathematically. Now, how long is it going to take him to come back down? Oh. Turns out if it takes three seconds to go up, it's going to take three seconds to come back down, because you have the same object pulled by the same gravity over the same distance, and so guess what? It's the same time. So that part's pretty cool. We get to know all kinds of stuff that way. <clears throat> so understanding this, we say, hey, we, we can learn all kinds of stuff, or we can guess at all kinds of stuff when, when we don't know that much of the beginning. So if I hit a baseball straight up in the air with an initial velocity of 14.89 meters per second, how high will it go, how long will it take for the ball to bash me in the head, how fast is it going when it hits me, and how can I ask you for so many things when I only gave you one number? Because we know Because we know a lot more than we think we do. In a problem like this, I look like I only gave you one number, but really we know quite a few numbers. So <clears throat> the first one. What do we know? Well, we know I gave you 14.89 meters per second. If it's meters per second, it has to be a velocity. velocity. Is this initial or final? Initial. That's the initial velocity. It's the final velocity coming off the bat, but the initial velocity in the air where we are talking about here. So <clears throat> we know that's our initial velocity. That's the only one I gave you, but is that the only one that we know? No, we know that our acceleration has to be... How do I know that? Because yes. anything flying through the air that's not self-powered, like a bird or a jet or something like that, is going to have this acceleration rate, as long as it's near the Earth's surface. If you go farther away, it, it changes, but here, near the Earth's surface, it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I also know that this baseball is going to go up until it... Zero. Yeah, so I know the VF has to be zero because it has to stop going up before it can come back down on me. So if I just look at the trip up part, I can easily find what we want. Now, the first question was what? How high did it go? 
So how high did it go? I'm looking for what? This, so what D formula has V, I, and A, and V, F in it? Uh, this one. Um, that one. Yes, the one that we just learned today. So if we take today's formula and we solve it for the, it looks like that. And you say, hey, that's great. I like that formula. So then we just stick those numbers into that formula, remembering to divide by, divide by, if we're not in fraction mode. I got 11.300311. What do we want to round that to? Okay, the number I gave you had? Four. Four. Do, is 9.8, how many sig figs are 9.81? Is this unlimited? No. The reason we have this number is we have measured it. We've dropped a bunch of things and we keep calculating its acceleration to be that number. And so this does, in fact, have three sig figs in it. So that will affect your number. So this had four, this had three, zero has unlimited. So I'm going to round off to three, 11.3. Mm. <coughs> so next we want to find out how much time did it take to go up and down. So how much time before the ball hits me in the head. So we still know the VI, we still know the A, and we still know the VF. But this time we're looking for time, but just the time up. Why am I only worried about just up? Because again, I, the VF is zero on the way up at the highest point. And so if I let it go to the highest point, no. There's going to be times where I can throw something in the air and I have a time to it. That doesn't tell me I'm at my highest point. That tells me I'm somewhere in the trip, but I don't know where. So if I can let it go all the way up to the highest point, I know the VF is zero. So Again, we're looking for time, so this time we still have the VI, the VF, and the A, but this time we're looking for T. So what T formula has those three things in it? If you take Friday's formula and you switch the T and the A around, then we end up with this. Why did I stick the up there? That reminds me that this is only the time going up and not the total time, which is what I'm looking for. <clears throat> so again, I'm using those same numbers. And this is really nice because 0 minus 14.89 is going to give me negative 14 divided by negative 9.81. The negatives are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave me positive time. Positive time is always a good thing to get. If you're getting negative time, then you're in Hollywood where... People go back in time all the time. <clears throat> but in real life, we don't see that happening. <coughs> What'd you get on that one? 1.526. Hey, I got 1.5178389. Nine. Now I'm going to take that number and I'm going to multiply it by 2. Why? Because again, the problem asks, how long is it going to take before it bashes me in the head? 
not how long did it take to get to the highest point. So we calculated how long it took to get to the highest point, but it has to come back down again. So since it has to come back down again, I just multiply by 2, then of course I'm going to round that to 3.04 seconds. So again, the time up has to equal the time down because it's the same distance, it's the same object, the same gravity is pulling on it, and so we get the same acceleration. So everything's real similar. We have this concept called symmetry. So our third question is, how fast is it going when it hits me in the head? So we still know our VI and our VF and our A, but this time we don't care. Now, we could pick a formula, we could do the math, and we could find out what is VF different, but it's much easier to do logic. We know the time up equals the time down. We know the distance up equals distance down. We know the acceleration slowing me down on the way up is the same as the acceleration speeding me up on the way down. So the velocity up has to equal? No, not velocity down. It's faster than I totally led you into that and then slammed you. <laughs> okay, why is the velocity up not equal to velocity down? Because it's the weight of the object. No, because velocity is a vector term. The speed up equals the speed down. But what does velocity have to speed the speed side? They both have magnitude. Negative. The vector term also has a direction. And what changed on the way up and the way down? The direction. So on the way up, it was going this fast, which was what kind of number? A positive number. But when it comes down, it's going to be a negative number. So the velocity is going to have to be negative 14.89 meters per second. So it is going to be the same magnitude, the same number. But it's not going to be the same direction. On the way up, it was positive. On the way down, it's going to be negative. So what does this tell you about shooting guns in the air? Don't do it. Yeah. Now, there are certain guns that are actually designed to be shot into the air. Those are called shotguns. And when you shoot shotguns in the air, you're shooting little tiny pellets, which are strongly influenced by air resistance. And so that does make a difference. A regular bullet, it is affected by air resistance, but it still comes down really, 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 really fast. In fact, there are stories, there was a story that happened in San Antonio uh, about 15 years back. Some parents went on New Year's Day and they're like, wow, our daughter's normally up to crack of dawn and how come she's not awake? And they went and tried to wake her up and she was dead in her bed. Because at New Year's night, somebody decided to shoot a gun up in the air, and the bullet that went up turned around and it came down, and it went through the roof, and it went through the ceiling, and it went through her head, and killed her right as she was sleeping in her bed. So you do want to be careful if you're shooting things. You know, if you want to make noise and you're not using fireworks, shooting straight down works too. <laughs> and then you just kill her. So. Um, it's better not to shoot a gun unless you're trying to shoot a gun. If you just want to make noise, go scream or something. So, just there for help. So for homework, you want to um, do problem D. Do problem D, of course. But first, I would like to take you on a little journey. No, not to wonder that. Um, stop it. To so squirrel. Not to squirrel. To here. Here is my oldest daughter plunging to her death. Oh, <laughs> Isn't that great? Um, we were, we were. Oh, that's literally the coolest thing. Okay, so um. <laughs> so we were at Slide Rock State Park in Arizona, and. Guess what's at Slide Rock State Park? Fox. <coughs> a slide rock. Um, <laughs> there is a, a river that runs through Slide Rock State Park, and there's rocks that have 
this river has been flowing for so long, it's made the rocks really, really slippery. And there's kind of a channel built in, and it's like a built-in water slide. And so the water was really, really cold, but beyond that, it was good. Except there's one spot halfway down the water slide where there's this little rock that sticks out. And so you're going really fast, and then boom, <laughs> you out yourself right into this rock. Um, but beyond that, it's cool. It's like a natural water slide. So lots of people went there. But then we went down the river, and we're exploring some stuff. And as we go down the river farther, we found this jumping rock. And all these people were leaping off this rock. And so my daughter's like, I'm going to jump off this rock because we like to go rock jumping at Inks Lake here in Texas. And so she gets up here, and well, they had jumped off this part over here that's lower. And no problem, they weren't scared on that. And then she gets up to here, and it's a little bit more, and you're like, uh, I'm not sure I want to do this. So I said, okay, I was here with a little camera, and I said, well, let me know when you're going to go, because you're taking forever. <laughs> and so she didn't say, I'm going to go now, she just leaps. So I caught her a, a step or two into this, but... <clears throat> If you're here, what you can do is you can actually click through it frame by frame. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. 38 clicks. Now, if we had 38 clicks, then she was falling for 38 clicks. If only I knew how many frames per second my camera took. If you find out about cameras, you find out that they, they have a certain frame per second. Mine happens, they, that was pretty, mine happens to be 30 frames per second. How many frames did it take her to fall? 38. So if we have 38 frames and we divide it by 30 frames per second, this is going to cancel out and that's going to give me... Second. Oh, this is nice when it jumps like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I can't write it all. So 38 divided by 30 gives me? A number. A number. Thank you. <laughs> so that gives me 1.266666666. So 1.27 seconds is about how far she was falling, how long she was falling. So if she fell for 1.27 seconds, then... How high was she? <laughs> Can we figure this out? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so clearly this is our time, and we know her acceleration rate was? Yeah. So we've got that number going for us, and we know her V initial was? Zero, because she didn't jump up, she didn't jump down, she just stepped out. And yeah, stepping out is fine when you're on the rock, once you're not on the rock, it means you fall. So again, what we want to find first here is, what is the? So what the formula has V, I, N, A, and T in it? The second one. The second one. The second one. The second yeah, so we're going to have the AT squared over 2 plus VIT, and again, since my VI is 0, this part goes away, so using that, figure out how high she was. What? What? Oh, Yeah, I want you to actually try it. Oh. Okay. I did. What do you mean? So that equals what? Negative zero point nine one. One two seven. Okay. Seven point eight seven. Oh. That's because I didn't put in one point two seven. I'm sorry. I I just left in my calculator the one point two six 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 six. Anyway, it, it's uncertain at the end, so we're fine. So, uh, what what is that in like feet? Well, we got negative. Yes, you got negative. Why do you get negative? Because of that negative. What you calculated was how far down she fell. 
I didn't ask how far down she fell. I asked how high she was. So then you put in a positive number, but it's going to be the same number. But anyway, there's a little bit more than three feet per meter, right? So if we just round this up to eight, eight times three, yeah, about 24 feet. So. <coughs> Yeah, 24 feet. Um, the ceiling is nine feet. Oh, so no higher. <laughs> yeah. So this would be a little taller than if you were up on the roof outside, jumping down. Of course, you wouldn't want to jump down to the cement. <laughs> in the water, it's a little nicer. But actually, you, you you start going higher and higher, and the water becomes less and less friendly when you're hitting it. Um, I've jumped off 40 foot cliffs before, and the water is not really friendly at 40 feet. Um, or like the like commercial. Now, how fast was she going when she smacked into the water? So now we're looking for. So, what formula has those four in it? The acceleration equals final velocity. Okay, so if we take the formula from Friday, our acceleration formula. And we solved that for VF. We had VF equals VI plus AT. <clears throat> so my VI again was zero. So that part goes away. So we're just going to have A times T, which means. Yes. Feel free to try. So we got negative 12.5 meters per second. Yes. And again, why is there a negative there? Because when she hit the water, she was going that way, not that way. That, that would have been kind of weird. So putting that into miles per hour, that was about 28 miles an hour. Wow. So if you're going 28 miles an hour, again, water at that point is, is right on the edge of not being friendly anymore. So you definitely feel it. If you go in correctly, it's nice. If you would like belly flop from that height, it would hurt real bad. I saw that happen at 40 feet where somebody went in and it wasn't pretty. So that's kind of fun, right? Now that you're learning more about physics, you can like apply it to real life and say, hey, I could actually calculate from the movie and figure out how high that guy was. Uh, and now you can take all your action movies and start going through frame by frame and see how far they fell and they were doing that stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing.